Hello guys, my name is Shreyase. I am an educator at Anacademy. You can follow me on the learning app as well. You can see my new set of courses on the learning app as well. So here I come with a new lesson, the lesson namely the calorie, uh, calorific values. So please do rate this lesson, review this lesson and please do share this lesson. And please do subscribe us on our YouTube channel that is the Anacademy Engineering Curriculum. Thank you. So guys, let's start with our course Elements of Mechanical Engineering. <coughs> So here I am, my name is Shreya Se, I am a B Mechanical Engineering student, you can follow me at the Anacademy user platform, sorry I forgot to mention over here, I will be giving it in the last set of, uh, last slide of this uh, video lesson. So the target audience for this slide will be engineering students, uh, the general audience who are interested in science related topics, people who are interested in environmental resources, people who are interested in knowing the involvement of natural resources. So the learning outcomes of this slide will be, you guys will come to know what is calorific value, what are the types of calorific value, what are the advantages and disadvantages of solid fuel, what are the advantages and disadvantages of liquid fuel, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of gaseous fuel. So let's start with our lesson, the calorific values of fuels or, or else the calorific values. So price is, uh, before going out into the lesson, let's have a quotation. The price is what you pay and the value is what you get. So let's start with the lesson, calorific value. It is the quantity of heat produced by the combustion of unit quantity of fuel. So this is called as calorific value. So uh, substances with high calorific value only pass through the, substance, uh, pass through the test of being into a fuel. So it is classified into two types of fuel, namely the higher gross calorific value and the lower or net gross calorific value. So these are the various calorific values of the, uh, <coughs> of the fuels we use in our day to day life and the fuels which I have already discussed in the uh, lesson before the petroleum based solid liquid and gaseous fuel. So the cow dung cake, uh, cow dung cake which will have around 6000 to 8000 kilojoules per kg of calorific value. The wood will have around 17000 to 22000. The coal will have around 25000 to 33000. The petrol it will have around 45000. The kerosene also will be the same as well as the diesel. The methane will have around 50000 kilojoules per kg. The CNG that is the compressed natural gas will have around 50,000 kilojoules per kg. The LPG that is the liquefied petroleum gas will have around 55,000. The biogas will have around 35,000 to 40,000. And the hydrogen will have around 1,50,000 kilojoules per kg. So you can see here the hydrogen has higher calorific value. That is the reason it is the most used for hydrogen bombs etc. And it is the most uh, highly... Uh, calorific value having uh, substance on earth. So let's start with the types of calorific value. Higher calorific value, it is defined as the total amount of heat liberated by the combustion of one unit of fuel when it is burned completely and when it is burned completely and it is cooled back to the normal room temperature. So this is called as the higher calorific value and the net calorific value is defined as the amount of heat liberated by the combustion of the same one unit one unit of fuel which is burnt completely and here the gases are allowed to escape. So let's start with our uh, this. So you can see here the calorific value and the moisture content they are actually uh, uh, inversely proportional to each other. So the lesser the moisture value is there the higher the calorific value will be there and higher the calorific value is there uh, lesser will be the higher the moisture value lesser will be the calorific value so what are the advantages of uh, solid fuel they are very easy to transport they are convenient to store there is no risk of spontaneous explosion as they are solid fuels they do not react with the gases outside and the cost of production is very low in uh, solid fuel and the position of moderate ignition temperature is available in the solid fuel so what are the disadvantages of solid fuel? The ash content is very high in solid fuel. <coughs> there is a large proportion of heat to be, uh, to be very high. So this will lead to energy consumption rather than energy production. There are formations of clinkers in the ash which will be very easy to remove. The combustion operation cannot be controlled easily. So the uh, operation cannot be controlled. So if there are any risky methods, the combustion may overgo. 
and the cost of handling these solid fuels are very high so that is another disadvantage of the solid fuel so you can see here the briquettes which is being burnt this is a combustion of a solid fuel you can see it over here so by this burning process only you can see there is no control over the rate of combustion it may happen slow or it may happen very fast so what are the advantages of liquid fuel it can be stored more compactly means in a vessel or in a liquid container it occupies less space for equal heating output compared to the solid fuels it can be handled easily with easy labor there are no ash or clinkering problems on this there is no spontaneous combustion which likely happens in the solid fuels there is no deterioration during storage if solid fuels are stored for a long number of time the energy production may get deteriorated or the efficiency may get deteriorated whereas the same thing won't happen in the case of liquid fuels and they are used ex extensively in internal combustion engines so what are the disadvantages of solid fuel there is no special provision way for tankers or pipelines for the combustion gases to omit out <clears throat> there is a high sulfur content in this uh, liquid fuel which may lead to vandalization and uh, there is the presence of vanadium which is a highly reactive uh, fuel which may lead to radioactive emissions there are there are forms of corrosive deposits which leads forms of corrosive deposits in the tankers as well as in the pipelines so and the hot pressure parts are easily molten out or easily worn out so you can see here the liquid fuel the petroleum which is a liquid fuel i have given over here just for image representation purposes and what are the advantages of gaseous fuel uh, in here also you can find no ash or clinker trouble the burning is quite clean without any smoke it is very easier to maintain and the preparation can be done at a central plane and the distribution of these gaseous fuels can happen in a wide range of area so there is no need of having small ranges of area for transportation or exportation <clears throat> so what are the disadvantages of gaseous fuels they are very highly poisonous they are very extremely dangerous as they can lead to radioactive disorders when reacted with the air they are explosives uh, very explosive in nature uh, just what i told now they are very radioactive so if they create a reaction with the air they may explode there itself and <clears throat> there must be very careful handling and utilization purpose for this or else it may lead to very hazardous effects which may take a toll on the human life so you can see here the natural gas which is a type of gaseous fuel thank you guys any questions please drop those in the comments box below you can find me at the anacademy user platform which i forgot to mention in the first slide please do follow me over there in the, by over the, by having a look over this url and if you have liked this presentation then please do rate the course review the course and please do recommend this slide or uh, uh, presentation you can find me on the anacademy user platform you can follow me there as well for my new set of courses thank you guys have a wonderful day have a good day